So this is going to be a MATLAB lecture. Uh, the goal of the lecture is to learn two things. How to solve a system of first order ODEs numerically in MATLAB and then how to solve a second order ODE numerically using MATLAB. So we're in the middle of the part of the course where we're talking about second order differential equations. And it turns out that in order to solve a second order differential equation in MATLAB, uh, we need to learn how to solve two first order differential equations. So that seems maybe a little bit strange, but um, that's the idea. So uh, I've got to explain to you a few things. I've got to talk about what do I mean by a system of first order dif differential equations. And then I'm going to remind you two ways to solve uh, differential equations numerically, and then we'll use it for the system of equations, Euler's method, and then the built-in MATLAB function ODE45. And this seems a little bit out of the mainstream of what we're talking about, which is second-order ODEs. Um, but then we'll get to solving second-order ODEs in MATLAB. And the reason is, like I just mentioned, you've got to learn how to do this first, systems of first-order equations, before you can do the second-order equation, because actually a second-order equation can be written as a system of two first-order ODEs. And then I'll do a few examples showing you how to do it in MATLAB. So that's the plan. First, I have to explain what I mean by a system of first order ODEs. So here's an example. I've got these two ODEs, one and two. For two unknown functions, my goal here is to solve for the two functions x of t and y of t. So I don't know those two functions. I have two ODEs describing those two functions. Those are shown. But you can see those two ODEs are coupled together. They're sort of mixed up. I can't disentangle them. I can't solve for equation 1 for x because it has y in it. And I can't solve equation 2 for y because it has x in it. So we say that these two are coupled ODEs. You can't separate them out as the as they're written. And so later in the course we're going to learn ways of how to solve this system. You have to solve this system together. The two, two equations have to be solved simultaneously. And we'll learn how to do that with pen and paper a little later in the course. But for now I want to focus on how to, to solve these sorts of things numerically. Um, so in general, so that, that's just a simple example. Now in general what is uh, system of ODEs look like. It looks like this. Let's say x dot is some function f1 of t, x, and y. It depends on t, x, and y. And f1 is a known function. And then I've got another equation. y dot is some other function f2, t of x and y. So f1 and f2 are known. Known functions but I don't know x and y. So I need to learn how to solve those two ODEs simultaneously. Of course, in the example above, you can see how the example above is a special case of the general form. So in the example above, f1 is 2y plus xt, and f2 is 3x plus t squared y. So let's learn some ways to um, solve these equations numerically in MATLAB. The first way I'm going to remind you of is how to adapt Euler's method to solve this sort of system of ODEs, and then we'll talk about how to use MATLAB's built-in function ODE45. So first thing, let me remind you about Euler's method. So Euler's method was the first way we learned to solve ODEs numerically. And we used it before, this is going to be a review, for solving an ODE which had this form, f of t and y. So it's just a single ODE. y dot is some function, known function f of t and y. And of course, this side here is the interpretation is this is the slope of y. And it depends both on t and on y itself. Okay. So the idea for Euler's method was that you start at some point, y0, t0. You calculate the slope at that point by plugging y0, t0 into this ODE. 
And then once I know the slope, I extrapolate a line with that slope that goes through that point to some later time, t1. Once I know t1, I then plug it back into the ODE in order to get the slope at that point. So now I have a different slope. And then I go draw a line with that slope and go a little bit forward to time t2. And I keep going forward like that in time. Each time I get the new slope by plugging in the previous point into the ODE and then go forward uh, on a line with that slope. And then I keep going on and on. So let me write out in equations what this looks like. Okay, so there's Euler's method. So for example, to get the second point y1, so y of t1, that would be this point here, y1. I take the first point, I calculate the slope at the point at the first point. So this is the slope at t0, y0, and then multiply by delta t. And then of course to get my next time t1, I just take my previous time and add delta t. So now using these two steps, I've got my next point, which is y1, t1. Now I do that whole thing again, but uh, just replace y0 with y1. So now if I want y2, or the second point y at t2, I take the previous one y at t1, calculate the slope at the point t1, y1, multiply by delta t. And then you just keep going on and on. So hopefully it's not too hard to realize how to do this in general. So y of tk plus 1. So the next y point that I need is the previous one, y of tk, plus the slope at the previous point, which is f of tk, y of tk, times delta t. And then, of course, tk plus 1 is just the previous one plus delta t, tk plus delta t. So that was just a review of Euler's method for a single ODE. So this is a review of Euler's method. Now what we have to do is think about how do we adapt this to a system of ODEs. So I don't have just one ODE, but I've got two coupled ODEs. How do I adapt this? It turns out to be quite easy to adapt it, and we'll do that on the next slide. So if we want to use Euler's method for a system of two first order ODEs, now I've got two ODEs here. And again, F1 of t and x and y is equal to the slope of x of t, right, at the point t, x, y. So the slope depends on time, on the value of x itself, and also on y, which is another function, right? And f2 of t, x, and y is the slope of y at the point t, x, y. So I've got those two functions tell me the slope of x and the slope of y. So I can then use Euler's method on each one of those just like before, right? So I'm going to need to start at an initial point. I'm going to need, need to know x0, y0, and t0. And then I'll use the slopes that I find by plugging into those ODEs. This is my system of ODEs. And I'll get two lines, one for x and one for y. And then I'll take those lines forward, just like before, and get my new set of points, right? Just like before. So you can kind of see how this goes. So I start with um, a value of x0, a value of y0, and a value of t0. I find the slope of x and y from the system of ODEs. And then I use my two lines with those slopes to get x1 and y1. 
and then you repeat. So for example, x1, or let's say x of t1, I want to know the next value of x. Well, it's the previous value, x0, plus the slope at that point, which is f1 of t0, x0, and y0, times delta t. And y, the value of y at t1, is y0, plus f2, because y has a different slope, times t0, x0, y0, times delta t. So it's the same idea as before, I just have to do it twice, and each one has a different slope. And then this part is the same as before, t1 is t0 plus delta t. And then hopefully it doesn't take too much imagination to see how it works in general. So x of tk will be x of, whoops, tk plus 1. will be x equal to x of tk plus f1 evaluated at tk, xk, yk times delta t and y of tk plus 1 is equal to y of tk plus f1, sorry, f2 tk, xk, yk, delta t, tk plus 1 is equal to tk plus delta t. So that's Euler's method for a system of ODEs. And uh, just because I was running out of space, I'm using here xk is hopefully is obvious. That's x evaluated at tk. Okay, so very, very intuitive. Um, you just sort of do the same thing twice uh, using the two different slopes. And uh, I would like to do an example, but I'm gonna save the example for um, the second order ODE. So we'll use this method um, when we do a second order ODE. So um, we'll come back, to the, come back to this a little bit later on.